Hello everybody. Well, what I have on the bed today is some street lights. Now these of course are the category V street lights of Australia. Okay. And we're going all the way back to 1960. Okay. And all the way up to pres up to the present. Okay. Now these are just some examples of the um, fittings. I don't have all of them back all the way. There are some others that I don't have, but these are just some examples or some <coughs> samples. Okay. Now, generally, we're talking about the lamp caliber. We're not really talking about the actual fitting. We're just talking about the lamp, okay? So we're going from fluorescent to high-intensity discharge, which is mercury, vapor, high-pressure sodium, or metal halide, to LED. Now, there were some other um, lamps. We had low-pressure sodium. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that, okay? If I did, I would have it here, but unfortunately, I don't. But I'll just show you some, <coughs> some, Okay. So, um, so these are the fittings here. These are, were commonly, these are on, used on major arterial roads, so such as um, industrial streets, uh, commercial grade streets, freeways, highways, even car parks or, um, or anywhere, which is category V. For, so, and that's these type of fittings here. Okay, so I've got some, some various ones, okay, and I'll tell you about them. Okay, so, um, so we'll start here and we'll work our way over okay so the first one that i have is a daylight adelaide this is a um <coughs> a, a fluorescent street light pattern and this dates back to the 60s or perhaps even earlier okay but i don't have really know much history of it but i do know that it was used on all the major roads back in the 60s era so the hippie era so if you were a hippie you would have seen these used on all our major roads in australia okay now you'll still find these Okay, you'll still find them in a lot of um, old abandoned places, even some uh, substations or perhaps even some pl a car place if you go to South Australia. Okay, but um, this is um, the fluorescent. Now, the tubes that I have in here are actually LEDs, but it was fluorescent, which is T12 fluorescent tubes, okay? Um, and they were used, okay? <clears throat> so this would have been a 4 by F40 T12 uh, light. Okay, now I do believe you could get it as a free, okay, or you can get it as a as a double, okay. It's similar to the to the road LED of today, okay. It's very similar to that, okay. So this fitting here, as you can see, it looks new. That's because it has been restored, okay. I had to restore it, okay. I got this actually got this from a substation, okay, and it, and it was filthy, but it has been restored, okay. And another thing that I was able to do was I was able to recut. All the threads on here, I was able to get some imperial dyes and 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 um and tappers for this to recut the threads. Okay, so um so this baton here is one and a one point two meters in length. Now other companies did have fittings that were similar. I think GEC had a baton which was identical. Okay, but I don't have one of them, but it was similar to this. Okay, so. So that was that, and that was used all the way up until I think the eight to the eighties when we switched over to high intensity discharge lights. Okay, now actually um, during this era we actually did have high intensity discharge lights available. We had low pressure sodium. Uh, I don't have any out, but I do have a you know, high pressure sodium bulb globe here. It's similar to this. Um, this is high pressure sodium, but it's similar. It had a, a U shaped arc tube. Okay, and the globe had a, a B22 base, and it was a really long globe. Okay, and it, had, and it was an interesting shape. Okay, and that was low-pressure sodium. And there was actually a fitting like this called the Daylight Adelaide, which was actually in low-pressure sodium. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so when we were using this, we there were, so when this was out, there were um, low-pressure sodium lights available. Well, not many, but there were. Okay, and that was basically our first high intensity discharge street light that we used. Okay, so we um so we switched over to low pressure sodium while this was being used. Okay, and and this was still being used when low pressure sodium was around. Okay. So um so that's um the daylight. Now the moving on over, but in the I think it was in the early 80s or the 60s, we switched over to high intensity discharge like mercury vapor, high pressure sodium, and metal halide. And that's what I've got here. I've got a Sylvania Roadstar and an OptiSpan, which are, of course, high-pressure sodium and metal halide. Okay, now I've got the two globes out here just to compare. Okay, so the difference between high-pressure sodium, which this is, and metal halide. 
okay, which this is. Now, I don't have a mercury vapor clear globe out to show you, but there were mercury vapors available. Okay, now it wasn't these particular type of fittings. These came later, but there were earlier ones known as the um, the OptiSpec, which was a big, big fitting. Okay, and that was our first, I think that was what replaced all these. <clears throat> now, the OptiSpec could have two configurations. It could have um, integral control gear or remote control gear. Okay, but this one here, but these ones are both integral. The control gear is built into the fittings. Where the very early ones, the control gear used to be remote. There used to be a box on the pole that would run to the fitting. Okay, and that would have all your ballast, your starter and everything in it. Okay, now the very, I think the very first ones didn't use photo cells. Okay, the, um, they probably used timer switches, I think, okay, to run these. Because these daylights didn't have photo cells. Okay, photo cells came, I think, in the 80s. Okay, but, excuse me, <clears throat> but um, but these were the, but after the OptiSpec, we had some other fittings, but the, then we had the OptiSpans. There were some various uh, models or variations of the OptiSpan. Uh, there was an, a model where, where it was all completely uh, metal. Okay, didn't have this polypropylene cover. Okay, um, but that but that one's just an example. And that one there is, um, is a 250 watt high pressure sodium and 250 watt metal halide so it will run either and the same with the roadstar that i have here it's the same okay that's a sylvania and this one here was probably the most popular back in the uh probably from well probably from the late 90s okay all the way up to um till probably the 20 um up to 2010s okay but this thing here you tend to see a lot of these and they are very good to good they're used on major roads and car parks i I've seen a lot of these, and of course that as well. There were various ones, <clears throat> okay, of these high-pressure sodium and metal halide and mercury vapor. Now, metal halide wasn't very commonly used for street lighting in Australia, okay? The metal halide wasn't very common, but it was used, okay? I've seen it. It puts off like a... The coated ones put off like a neutral white colour, okay? <laughs> now, this high-pressure sodium globe, you notice, has two arc tubes. It's an instant restrike. Okay, and this is what I think came with either the Roadstar or the OptiSpan when I got them. Okay, it has had some use on it. Okay, that's a tubular globe and that's a, um, a football shape. Okay, now the globes that I have in these, of course, are the football shape encoded. Okay, so they're both coated. They're the same as these, except they've got phosphors on them. Normally you'd have clear globes in these, but I like the phosphor coated ones. They just look like nice. Okay, and the photo cells these use are the NEMA style. Okay, there are dummy cells. I'll just show you one of those. So this is a dummy cell. So what this is, it's um, it's basically just short circuits this. Okay, because these won't work unless you have that on there. So if you want to use these as just a manual light or have them on one big photo cell, what you do is you put this on and then you in place of this and you can, you can run it. Okay, that's what I, I call that a dummy cell. Okay, it's actually a shorting cap but I just call it a dummy cell, okay? And um, so this is the photo cell. It's made by Area Lighting Research, okay? And there's the photo cell receptacle right there. So that just plugs on there and twists into place. And that's what turns the light on and off at dusk and dawn, okay? And that's um, what we use nowadays. Now, some, um, some of the other fittings like this, um, sometimes the photo cells were either mounted on the top, okay? The very old ones, I think that was... B triple two nine, I think, or some some description, but the but then they mounted them down the bottom for some reason. Okay, now now of course we move on to the present, which is now, which is of course LED light emitting diode. Okay, and that <coughs> is what we have here. We have two fittings. We got the road LED uh, MIDI and the standard size road LED. Now I, now, I will have a separate video of this coming up, but I need to get a part for it because this had a, a faulty part in it. So I need to get that replaced before I can use this thing. Okay, so um, so that's why I haven't done the video of this yet, but I will have that upcoming. Once I get that part, I'll have this a video of that coming up. But this is the MIDI road LED, which is basically in the middle of the street LED and, of course, this behemoth. Okay, so this one here is a 70 watt LED. This would replace a 150 watt high pressure sodium light. Okay, so um, you know, like th like this. Okay, and um, but it goes up to 150 watt, which is the highest you can go. Okay, now this you can get in either a dual or a single LED panel. This one here is 
the two is the dual panel version. The single panel versions I've seen a lot in South Australia, but they're not very common here in Victoria for some reason. I just don't know why. Okay, maybe it's maybe the the engineering departments in South Australia, like the Australia the South Australia Power Industry versus the Victorian one, have different codes. I just don't know. But that's a dual panel. Okay, but you can get it in a single as well, similar to the Ferguson Zodiacs, where you think you can have one or two tubes. Okay, and once again, we have the same photo cell. Now, what's interesting of these new technology is that you can also use a smart cell because that's what these extra four contacts are for because there's like smart cells that you can put on these as well. Okay, I don't have one, but it's um, something that they can use. So if you want to have it controlled from a smart cell, which I think like, like some sort of app on your phone or something, you can do that. Okay, and, um, and these are heavy and these are darn heavy too. I think they're way more than this thing. Okay, this is die cast chassis, but it's polypropylene. This thing's completely die cast. There's no polypropylene cover whatsoever. And then, of course, we have the standard sized road LED, which is this behemoth right here. Okay, I call it a behemoth because it is a chunk. Okay, this thing is absolutely heavy and it is very stout. Okay, so we got four panels on this one. You could get three or four. Now, this used to be available in two and one, but those models were discontinued when this came along. So now this is only available in three and four only now. So if you buy a, um, a 155 watt or up, you'll get you'll have to go for this one and it'll be either three or four panels. This one here is a 275 watt version. Now, this was an error screen when I got it, but I didn't like that. So I swapped the diffuser over for the standard size. Okay, once again, it's the same type of photo cell, smart cell compatible. You can put a smart cell on there if you want. <clears throat> okay, you mount your spigot arm in through here. Same for there. Now, um, okay, so this one here is just an absolute behemoth of a light. That thing would definitely scare away a vampire. Okay, so if you have vampires keep annoying you, just get some of these. I'll definitely keep them away. Okay, and this thing will as well, because these things are pretty bright, even for the lower wattage. I've seen them running on streets, and they're pretty bright, okay, believe it or not. So if you think 70 watts not very bright, it is not, okay? If you've been playing with LEDs, it's power, it's bright, okay? So, so that's um, the lights that we're using now in 2022, okay? So, um, and they, these are slowly replacing these, okay? Because all of these are old technology. These are basically analog analog lights okay so but they were high tech back in the 80s okay back in the 80s they were high tech okay they, they were the thing okay and they've and they were pretty reliable okay and they replaced the old fluorescent okay now with these ones here these are can be retrofitted to led so you don't have to replace the whole unit you can just put led tubes in it now the, they do make led globes with that e40 base so you can put leds in these as well i don't have any but if i did i could put it in Okay, <clears throat> and and uh, but I think putting in an LED glow would be cheaper than buying a new thing because these aren't these LEDs are not cheap. For this thing here, you're looking around six hundred dollars or perhaps nine hundred. This thing here, you're looking about nearly two grand. Okay, so they're not cheap. Okay, because they are solid die cast. Okay, they're very heavy. Okay, and they're probably very expensive to manufacture. So that's why they're expensive. <clears throat> but they are. But you get what you pay for an LED. The lighting of the of the of the future, they'll last you for years. Okay, you'll get lots of years of trouble-free service out of them. Okay, so you won't have to worry about them. Uh, and there are parts available, so you can uh, the parts are diffusers. So if you've got a broken diffuser, you can just replace that. You can get a new photo cell. You can get either a new panel, and you can also get a new inverter. Okay. <coughs> and what I'll do is I'll turn this around and I'll show you inside this i'll show you at the top of this <clears throat> okay on the top we have this nice heat sink up here all right so that's a big heat sink okay we don't have that on these okay now i'll open this up to show you okay what part was faulty in this okay okay there was basically a part that was here okay it was some sort of um power inverter and unfortunately the it, the, what, the one that came with this had burnt out for some reason so I tried to bypass it, but it turns out it just overloads my circuit breaker. So, so I've ordered a new one, and I should get it soon. And when I do, I'll have a video of this coming up. But you have this um, inverter here. You've got your terminal block here. Okay, so that's basically all there is. Okay, there's just an inverter. There's no ballast or starter or anything like that in these new LED lights. 
Okay, and these, you know, just clip shut. And so it's, instead of a polypropylene cover, you've got a die cast one. So these are much stronger than polypropylene. So, okay, so these ones here are pretty, oops, are pretty tough. All right. So they'll stand up to a lot of abuse compared to these because the polypropylene covers on the back of these, they would, they're very likely to break. Okay, and I often do see a lot of these fittings where the diffusers are missing or the cover on the back is missing. Okay. So, um, so that's why, so that's why I've seen a lot of them being replaced with these, but that's basically all there is to the major road lights. Um, like I said, we started from the sixties. Now, before this, we had incandescent fittings. We had the 300 watt incandescent before this thing, but those were replaced with this. Okay. And then of course we had our high intensity discharge with low pressure sodium, metal halide, high pressure sodium, and mercury vapor. And then of course, now we have LED. Okay, so um, so if you uh, so if you have any questions about these lights, or if you want to see more about them, I've got individual videos on all of these fittings. So if you want to learn about that, a bit learn about them. Okay, and I tell you some of the history, but this is just a video of showing you all all of them side by side, so you get so you can see the difference between them. And of course, I will have a video of the MIDI coming up soon. Okay, but I do have videos on on the daylight, the road star, the OptiSpan, and the standard road LED. Okay, hope you enjoyed, and that'll be it.